the misconception of Catholic beliefs is one of the reasons why Catholics are often criticized for those beliefs. They are misconceptions. We worship the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Trinitarian God. This is what all Christians worship, but we do not worship Mary. However, we have great love for her. We have great uh, devotion to her. Do Catholics worship Mary? The simple answer is no. And the less simple answer is, it depends on what you mean by worship. We're a bit hobbled in English as we only have the one word, and so tend to think in terms of only one concept. Worship, we tend to think, means treating something as absolute, deferring to it as the decisive most important thing, and therefore, necessarily, there can only be one most important. Ancient Christians thought a little differently. They were aided, for instance, by having more than one word for worship, in Greek, latria and proskunesis. Latria is the type of respect or deference paid absolutely. Proskunesis is a type of respect or deference that is only relative. Real respect, real deference, real worship, we might say, but paid to something out of respect for something other, a more superior thing. As an American, I might show a certain kind of respect or deference to the American flag or the Constitution, not strictly out of respect for some strips of cloth or a browning piece of parchment, but out of respect for the republic for which it stands. And it's worth pointing out that this distinction has been reserved in Catholic theology in the Latin equivalent of these terms, adoratio and veneratio. Adoratio or adoration is the type of respect appropriate only to the uncreated divine nature. Veneratio or veneration is that type of respect due to created natures with a view to honoring the divine nature. Either word might equally be translated worship, that is, from the Old English worth-ship, or to regard something as worthy of honor. But since this can be confusing for many of us speakers in modern English, it perhaps makes sense to stick to the more clearly differentiated terms, adoration and veneration. For Catholics, Mary can and should be venerated, never adored. I remembered in Montreal, where I'd studied um, for a few years, there's um, a square called Place Victoria in French, and there's this statue of Queen Victoria. Again, a representation of the Queen, showing respect and honor. The interesting thing is, from this square, if you go a few blocks down, you get to Rue Notre Dame, you know, which means Our Lady, the, the street of Our Lady. And this Rue Notre Dame takes you to Notre Dame Basilica. And Notre Dame Basilica, who is the Queen who is crowned there? It's the Virgin Mary. It shows you the difference between two spiritualities. Catholics emphasize the devotion to Mary even as queen, you know, crowned by her son Jesus, because she is the mother of our Savior, right? So our devotion to her is based on who she is in terms of the role she plays in our salvation. She brings the Son of God into the world through her flesh. Do we worship her? No, we certainly do not. Is she vitally important? Definitely. Mary is at the heart of Orthodox Christology. And what I mean by Orthodox Christology, I mean correct belief in terms of Christ. And so there was a great 5th century debate um, in which the question was, is Mary really the God-bearer or is she the Christ-bearer? And the church decided that no, Mary is actually the God-bearer. She has God really inside of her. And this is absolutely essential for a number of reasons, but one, that Jesus Christ takes on the full humanity um, of his mother. And, and so God, in this crazy sense, has a mother. There's also another important point, and that is, it would have been the Virgin Mary, her, her testimony, her testimony, when there was the first her heresy in the church, the Ebionite heresy. The Ebionites believed that Jesus is not divine, he is not the Son of God, and the Virgin Mary wasn't even a virgin when she conceived um, Jesus. So only the Virgin Mary could state correctly and correct this heresy by telling the apostles by whom she conceived Jesus. Right? Only she could say Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Only she could say that she was a virgin before 
and a virgin after. Right? This is Mary's testimony, and we rely on her for orthodoxy. Her words are basically the basis of what we believe as Christians, that Jesus is the, the Son of God, that he is divine. Mary never stands alone. Uh, she is like the moon. The moon receives all its light from the sun. And likewise, Mary receives all her light and all her goodness, all her glory from the sun, but not the S-U-N, but the S-O-N. So retroactively, Mary takes up the great yes of Jesus Christ. And she says an absolute yes to our Lord. This posture of Mary, in which she says yes, in which God dwells within her, becomes the ultimate posture for us. It, it is what it means fundamentally to be a Christian, is to have Christ within us. And because of her perfect yes, Mary is the saint of all saints. And so when we honor Mary, we honor God.